Good morning, everybody, and welcome live to Holy Trinity Church for this service of morning prayer as we gather together and come before the Lord. Let's keep silence together to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory for ever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. The Psalms appointed for this morning, Psalms number 20 and 81. May the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you, send you help from his sanctuary, and strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings, and accept your burnt sacrifice. Grant you your heart's desire, and fulfill all your mind. May we rejoice in your salvation and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord perform all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will save his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the mighty strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will call only on the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen. But we are risen and stand upright. O Lord, save the King. And answer us when we call upon you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Psalm 81 Sing merrily to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Take up the song and sound the timbrel the tuneful lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, as at the full moon upon our solemn feast day. For this is a statute for Israel, 
a law of the God of Jacob. The charge he laid on the people of Joseph when they came out of the land of Egypt. I heard a voice I did not know that said, I eased their shoulder from the burden, their hands were set free from bearing the load. You called upon me in trouble and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and proved you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me, there shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I shall fill it. But my people would not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. So I sent them away in the stubbornness of their hearts, and let them walk after their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. Then I should soon put down their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. Those who hate the Lord would be humbled before him and their punishment would last forever. But Israel would I feed with the finest wheat and with honey from the rock would I satisfy them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with divine spirit, with skill, intelligence, and knowledge in every kind of craft, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting and in carving wood, in every kind of craft. And he has inspired him to teach, both him and Oholiab, son of Ahizamak, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do every kind of work, done by an artisan, or by a designer, or by an embroiderer in blue, purple, and crimson yarns, and in fine linen, or by a weaver, by any sort of artisan or skilled designer. Bezalel and Oholiab and everyone skillful, to whom the Lord has given skill and understanding to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary, shall work in accordance with all the Lord has commanded. This is the word of the Lord. A reflection on the reading by Bishop Christopher Herbert, sometime Bishop of St Albans. To devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver and bronze in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood. In the blunt and mechanistic language of contemporary management speak, Bezalel would be described as having a great skill set. 
It's a useful but ugly phrase. And because it does not have the faintest whiff of poetry about it, it misses the point. How can you refer to a jeweler or a silversmith or an artist as having a skill set? The work of true craftsmen and women comes from the disciplined and patient attention they give to the material with which they work. It's an attention that has the quality of prayer. There is much gazing, much contemplation, much pondering. They have enormous and reverential respect for the material allowing it to shape their response. If you look carefully at a sculpture, such as Jacob Epstein's Jacob wrestling with the angel, you will notice great chisel marks gouged into the stone. But those marks also have the quality of a gentle caress. They are almost like an apology from the sculptor to the stone itself for having had the audacity to hammer it. So, back to Bezalel, who was given the task of creating from inanimate stuff objects honouring to God, which would have about them some of the beauty and holiness of the Almighty. It was a daunting, sacred task. Now bring this story closer to home. When you try to create words for worship, how do you shape them? Is a loving, respectful attention part of your craft? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people. Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your Spirit and kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. We say the Benedictus. Christ has gone up on high and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. 
to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ has gone up on high, and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. Brothers and sisters, let's bring our prayers, concerns, needs, intercessions to Almighty God. As we reflect on this morning's reading from the book of Exodus, As we think about the skill, attention, imagination of craftsmen and craftswomen, belonging as we do to this cathedral of the arts and crafts, as Sir John Betjeman, the poet laureate, once described it. So we give thanks for all those who built this sacred place 130 years ago. For that vision of beauty which inspired them and which today we inherit. And as we reflect on our own craftsmanship, in our worship and in our prayer, may the Lord bless us with imagination, creativity, dedication, attentiveness, as we give back to him from all that he has given to us. We pray for the life of our parish. For all who live in or work in or today will walk through Wilbraham Place. We give thanks for our local councillors working to hold our community together in these challenging times. We pray for our assistant church wardens, John Renz and Jill Dunley in all that they are contributing to the life of our church, living at present in a very different way. As we pray for the church throughout the world, today we pray for the diocese of Nandial in India and for Bishop Egoni Push Palalitha for 
for the Diocese of Adelaide in Australia, for the Primate, Bishop Geoffrey Smith, and for the Assistant Bishops there, Tim Harris, Christopher McLeod, and Denise Ferguson. And in this Diocese of London, we pray for the parish of Holy Trinity Twickenham, for its vicar, the Reverend Tim Garrett, and also for Archdeacon Cambridge's Church of England Primary School, for the staff as they prepare for a partial return of children in two weeks' time. We pray for the life of our nation, especially for all those exploring new tests, or scientists and medical professionals. For those working on track and tracing technology. As we seek a return to a more normal way of living. As we pray for those who are sick, we pray for Barbara Gill, for any we know really struggling as the lockdown continues. And as we pray for those who have died, we give thanks for the lives of Derek Rankin-Reed and Debbie Pearson. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And now in the silence, let us give to God the joys and sorrows of our lives, let us commit to him the details of the day ahead, however few they may seem to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Well, it's Friday already and uh, we're heading into um, another weekend. And I hope that you'll join us on Sunday at 11 o'clock for the sung Eucharist. And I'm really delighted to say that our preacher this week will be our very own Bishop Michael Marshall. And that will be a great treat for us to see him and hear him and uh, respond to him uh, once again. On Sunday, we'll be really celebrating with great gusto uh, the ascension of Jesus Christ, and there'll be, again, some wonderful hymns that we'll be able to sing along with. And then at 12 o'clock, we'll be back in the Zoom room uh, for our coffee break, and you'll find the details of how to enter that online. Do look out for uh, the weekly news, which uh, should be arriving in your email inboxes tomorrow. There are going to be so many pictures that you've sent us uh, from your gardens and balconies and nearby parks as we celebrate the Chelsea Flower Show, which has gone online this year. So look out for your email and join us, won't you, this Sunday at 11 o'clock for worship and 12 o'clock for our coffee break. Have a very good day. <laughs>